turn with me to 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse one. Tonight, of course, is our equipping service, equipping laborers. And, and this is a prophetic word. It's a prophetic teaching, I believe, for our body. And it's, a, it's time sensitive. And, and, and so a lot of these, these equipping services, we're gonna be exercising in spiritual gifts uh, and, you know, and in really tools for the harvest. But also I wanted to recognize that, you know, that if, if you don't show up in the time of harvest, you can have all the tools and it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna help anybody. You know, if, if, if you've got all the tools in your truck to build a house and you show up on the wrong lot, guess what? A house is not being built that day. So it's important that we recognize the place of our plants and we recognize the purpose of the season that God has us in and that we are in the right place at the right time in the window, the divine window, what, what, what Paul called in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 in the Amplified, the day of God's favor. It said in the, in the appointed time, the day of God's favor in the Amplified. And I believe that we are in, a, in an appointed and anointed time. And it is a day of God's favor. And God is leading this body. He is restructuring some things. He is reforming some things, even with the adjustments that are coming in terms of what we're gonna be announcing with, with Sundays and what they're gonna look like to bring us all together into an upper room encounter, an upper room experience to where we can go deeper in God. And then we can be launched further into a place of purpose and a place of harvest. That we can come together as family for family around faith, but anointed with fire. And God in this season is, is waking up many in the body to his passion, his purpose, and the why behind our what. Because sometimes you can lose sight of why you do what you do. And when you do, you, you can, your heart can grow weary even in well-doing. But if your why is hot, if your why is hot, if, 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 if why you do what you do, if why you wake up every morning is continually burning with the passion of Jesus Christ to see others encounter him, to see the person of the Holy Spirit given full reign in your life and Jesus lifted up in the lives of those around you, you won't need an alarm clock. You'll wake up by purpose every time. Purpose and passion will wake you up every morning when you recognize the why behind your what. And one of the things we see in, a, in the life of, of one of our great heroes in the faith is it can be very easy to lose the, the wonder of our why and miss out on our what. Second Samuel chapter 11, it says in verse one, it happened in the spring of the year at the time when kings go out to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the people of Ammon and they besieged Rabbah, but David remained at Jerusalem. So it was in the time of spring, in the spring of this year, when kings went out to battle, David sent someone in his place. Where did he send him? He sent him to a place called Rabbah. Rabbah actually means great in abundance. So it's actually a place of increase. And the people they were called to take out were the people of Ammon and Ammon means inbred. They were the people that they, 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 were not, they were not making a difference in the lives of those around them. It only had to do with them and theirs. They were looking in and never living out. And what happened was David was supposed to execute righteous rule, but he sent someone in his place. And listen, God has given people into your life to help accomplish your purpose, but you can't send someone else to do what you're anointed to do because they may do the what, but if they don't have the why, they will not fulfill the purpose that God intended. And there is just a, such a call right now to, to allow our hearts to burn for what burns his heart. I'm so excited. Next Wednesday, Tim is gonna be, gonna be speaking to us about harvest and again about the, how, how our leadership and our laboring works together to reach the lost. And just last night, they saw 326 kids come to Christ. Can we give God the glory for that? Come on. Not just talking about harvest, but going after the harvest, because guess what? The fields can't get any more white than they already are. The fields are white. The fit, listen, if, you, if, you'll just, if you'll just have a boat, they'll jump in. If you'll just cast a net, it will be full. If you will just not second guess or second, sec, second guess what God has asked you to do, 
but begin to step out in faith according to what he asked, when he asked, you'll be amazed at the, the miracles, the healings and, and, and the divine encounters and appointments that you have every day. God doesn't live just in this place. He lives in every one of us. And every one of us is a revival service about to happen in the lives of those around us. This city being awakened to her purpose, like Pastor Jeff sang about, tonight is special. There is a wind on the wings tonight, but I wanna tell you, it says he makes his angels winds and his ministers flames of fire. And so if there's a wind blowing, it's not just for the angels, but it's for the angels who are called to assist you in harvest. Hebrews 1.14 says, are not all angels ministering spirit, sent, ministering spirit sent to those who would inherit salvation? That means that God has appointed angels that have your call as their assignment and they cannot begin to accomplish what God designed them to do until you begin to walk out his destiny for me and you. And see, David was supposed to, his butt belonged in the battle. It was in the time of spring when kings go out to battle and it said, David remained at Jerusalem. What did Jerusalem represent? A place of comfort. It represented a place that was familiar. But see, he was a king and it was the time when kings went out to battle and, 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 and David wasn't in battle, but he was the king. And see, what happens is when we're not in the right place at the right time, we find ourselves quickly doing the wrong thing. And what we see here in the life of David, I, I believe that we see this now in something that is known as spring fever. Did we not just spring forward this past Sunday? And see, what happens is we can get excited about a new season, but if you don't keep the fire of the new burning in me and you, all of a sudden that fire can begin to flicker and you can begin to lose the place of your flame. You can begin to make choices out of fear that would cause you to sacrifice the very gift that God has given you to give as a gift to those around you. How many kings in the house? In the time of spring, when kings went out to battle. Verse two, it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. And I was talking with our staff about this yesterday and I, I started seeing that in a new way because number one, Kings belonged in the battle and where was he? In the bed. So it says that he arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. And so all of a sudden I saw that when we enter into self-promotion or the exaltation of us, or because or what happens is when you're not where you're called to be and you enter into a place of apathy, all of a sudden you'll find yourself in a place of pride and a place of self-promotion and beginning to try to see yourself as higher and you'll position yourself in a wrong way. He belonged in the battle, he found himself in the bed. And see, one of the tactics of the enemy, I believe, especially in this season, is the enemy attempts to lure us into a place of spiritual apathy so he can snare us in a place of carnal appetite leading to compromise. And then compromise creates shame, which then creates guilt to where then all of a sudden we can't see what we have to give because all we can see is what we lack. And this is what happens in the life of David. But I wanna tell you, it does not have to happen to us. We do not belong in the bed, we belong in the battle. We do not belong in the place of comfort, we, do, we belong in the place of calling. It goes on to say, not only did he walk on the roof of the king's house, but from the roof, he saw a woman bathing. You know what, if his butt was in the battle, he wouldn't have been looking at the bath. Wrong place, wrong time. And from the roof, he saw a woman bathing and the woman was very beautiful to behold. So David sent and inquired about the woman and someone said, is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite? Now, here's what I want you to recognize. Uriah is Hebrew for the fire and the flame of Yah. It's the fire of God. His name means the fire of God, but he was a Hittite. Hittite in Hebrew means fear, it means terror, and it means torment. And what you begin to see is when David was not where he was called to be, 
when he found himself in the bed, when he found himself choosing comfort over calling, looking back and not looking forward, he found himself in a place of compromise that not only cost him what, what could have been his call, but it began, to, it began to cost the entire nation. Not just him, but the, the, the destiny of an entire nation was hanging on his choice. And thank God for grace, amen? Thank God that we live under a new covenant. Thank God for mercy. Thank God that God can use what the enemy meant for evil and turn it into something good. Because how many of you know, this, this pregnancy did not turn out, but they had another named Solomon and he built God a house. And so God can redeem your mistakes. He can make a miracle out of your mess. But I wanna tell you oftentimes what happens, and I see it a lot in this season, Sin of omission precedes the sin of commission. So in other words, David, as a, as, a, as a fighting king, he was a worshiping warrior king. He was not where he was called to be. And the word omission means something neglected or left undone. It means apathy toward or the neglect of duty. So he entered into omission and did not value his commission. And see, I wanna tell you, we've been called to a great commission to go into all the world and make disciples of every nation, teaching them everything that Jesus taught us, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But oftentimes what happens is we lose sight of the what because we let the why begin to die in us. The love of Jesus the love for others. And when, Christ, when our Christianity becomes self-seeking, it's no longer Christ-centered. When our Christianity becomes self-seeking, it is no longer Christ-centered. And see, what happens here is David began to pursue what meant more to him than what really brought value to the nation. And, and, and I was thinking about this the other day. We were meet with our staff and, and we, were, we, were, we were having our, our, our week, just our weekly time of staff prayer and our leadership lab and talking through some things. And I was praying with one of our staff about a situation in her life. And, and as I was praying, I, I saw these to-go boxes. How many of you love to-go boxes? Nobody, just me, eh? Nobody likes leftovers, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Here's the thing. If you don't eat those leftovers quick, <laughs> they can go bad. Real quick, I was gonna make a left behind joke, but I'm not going to. There's not enough room to, not enough time tonight to kick that cow. But here's what I started seeing, was oftentimes in experiences, what is meant to be digested in the moment and is meant to be, 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 be taken in, we're not able to, to take in all that we thought we could. And so we end up taking things away and we end up putting them in the fridge. And the thing about those to-go boxes is, is it's rare that you get a to-go box you can see into. It's kind of a mystery, right? So when your fridge fills up with to-go boxes, it's like, man, a lot of styrofoam. I think all the new stuff's pushed to the back. Can't see anything. And if you're like me, you open up, you're like, ah, hmm, okay. I'm gonna go order something I can see, hallelujah. And what happens if you're not careful, one thing can turn and affect everything. And so we started thinking about, you know, how many times in our life do we have to go portions, things that we've taken from a meeting, from an encounter, from a past experience. And it might've been good in the moment, but over time it began to sour because it was no longer for that season. Or it was, it was something that maybe we, we took something as, as a misunderstanding or the potential for offense. And instead of dealing with it there at the table, we held on to it. And, and, and before too long, it actually began to cause something to stink in us. And I believe that what happened is David held on to some to-go portions of past victories. He no longer felt that he needed to fight in the present because he had victory in the past. And what I see happen in this season is people can enter into a place of pride because of past victory and miss out on present grace. It's a sobering word. It's a sobering word. And so I wanna encourage you do not choose comfort over call in this season. Do not be lured into apathy and allow another appetite to find a place within your spirit man. This is the time, listen, for those who will push past the invitation of the enemy for apathy, we will be awakened and awaken others. 
But it is, a, it, is a, it is a line of demarcation, I believe, and the spiritual sand of our city and our nation where God is looking for people who will not choose to look back, but will choose to advance forward because there's a place called Rabbah, a city of great abundance that is waiting to be discovered to where those who have been, been inbred, those who have been just cohabitating together and just trying to create among themselves and lose sight of the nations, that all of a sudden God could begin to send a people to pillage and to plunder the enemy's camp and to take back what rightly, rightly belongs to our king. But to do that, he has to have kings in the battle and not in the bed. Am I speaking to anybody tonight? So David sent and inquired about the woman. Someone said, is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? David sent messengers and took her. She came to him and he lay with her for she was cleansed from her impurity and she returned to her house and the woman conceived. So she sent and told David and said, I am with child. And see, here's the thing about compromise. It's never just about you. Listen, I wanna tell you, your life matters. Your choices have a ripple effect that do not just affect your lives, but affect the lives of the lives of the lives of those that you're in contact with. Every choice we make has a ripple effect that doesn't just affect our immediate family and our co-laborers, our co-workers, but I wanna tell you the decisions that you make have a ripple effect that touch this entire world. How many of you know that? How many of you believe that? How many of you recognize that we don't make choices based on what's going to kind of cause us to feel comfortable. We have to make decisions based on what's gonna please my king and what's gonna accomplish my call. And there are certain seasons of divine opportunity and windows to step out and to step in to what God has for us. And Kingsway, we are in one of those seasons. We are standing at a line in the spiritual sand and the Lord is inviting us to step across that line and to step into a new place of transformation that will bring reformation to our nation and awakening to the world. God is positioning you to not just change your life, but to change the lives of those around you if you can begin to recognize the greatness of his call and also be aware that the enemy has devices, he has snares that he would love to lay before you. And I'm not saying that, of course, you know me, I'm not saying that to create any kind of fear. I'm, tr- I'm saying it to create awareness, awareness. Because David didn't think there was anything wrong staying in the bed. He probably had some really good people around him going, hey, Dave, Dave, you deserve a rest. You've done a lot. Conquered so many cities, taken down armies. You could use a nap. And how many of you know, if you have enough people tell you to take a nap, you're gonna start yawning. Listen, I'm telling you, I've seen it. And listen, I've preached this message one other time and I waited until April 20th to preach it. And I wished I had preached it in March, two years ago, three years, three years ago, 2016 three years ago, because here's what's happening. This is a for, this is, this is what's called foreknowledge. We are giving tools now to help you to fight through the season we are in. Anybody can stand up and say, hey, guess what just happened? We need to be those who position ourselves. A prophetic people should be ahead of the curve. Position like Zacchaeus. Everybody else sought to see what he did. Zacchaeus sought to see who he was. So it says he went to where Jesus was about to be. And if we can be a people who can discern where he's about to be and put his call over our comfort, guess what? On a Wednesday night, this place will be flooded with worshipers because they'll recognize lifting up the name of Jesus means a whole lot more than watching a show you could have DVR'd. I mean, if if, if we're really passionate for what Jesus gave his life for, then how can we, how can we, how can we for a minute consider our comfort over his call? When there are people in this world that are lost and they're dying and they're going to hell, there are sick bodies that need to be healed. And there are too many in the church that are walking around looking at their own nakedness, creating their own fig leaves, not walking with him in the cool of the day and not living in the way that God intended them to. But it can change in a moment. Just one adjustment can position them to be rightly aligned with Jesus as their head. Does this make sense? Please, I, I, hope, I hope when I said that, it doesn't sound like, like, a, like a harsh condemnation or anything like that. It is an invitation. It's an invitation to not step back, but to step up so together we can step out. Amen? Amen. 
the woman conceived. Again, when, you begin to, when we begin to practice deceit, it begins to sow in a wrong way in the lives of others. Verse six says, David sent to Joab saying, send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. When Uriah had come to him, David asked how Joab was doing and how the people were doing and how the war prospered. And David said to Uriah, go down to your house and wash your feet. So Uriah departed from the king's house and a gift of food from the king followed him. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his Lord and did not go down to his house. So really, David had asked for Uriah to come back so he could go lay with Bathsheba and think that the baby she was now carrying could be his. So now he's inviting the fire of God to begin to, he's, he's beginning to invite that to begin to lay with his problem. But how many of you know Uriah was loyal? And loyalty has been an overlooked, underdeveloped, and unvalued trait in the body of Christ that is being reawakened like honor. Second Chronicles 16, nine says, the eyes of the Lord are searching to and fro for hearts that are loyal, loyal to him and loyal to others so that he can show himself strong on their behalf. And in the same way that the Holy Spirit is attracted to honor, the strength of God is attracted to loyalty. The strength of God is attracted to loyalty. And Uriah was loyal to his king, but he was also loyal to his men. And what he was saying was, if I've got men who are dying in the field of battle, I'm not gonna go lay in the bed because, because I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna go do that when I recognize I'm called to be out there. And see, that's, 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 that's that holy conviction. That's that fire that burns to where all of a sudden you just, it, it, for some of us, what it felt like was there's gotta be something more. I can't just do church the way I've done church. There's there's more to be seen. There's more to be experienced. There's more to be lived out. And I'm telling you, it's that thing in him that going, no, I I can't just go back to doing what I did. There's men out there who need my help. They need my leadership. They need my fire. I don't wanna tell you, this city needs your leadership. This city needs your fire. This city needs you awakened to your call so you can awaken them as well. So when they told David saying, Uriah did not go down to his house, David sent to Uriah and said, did you, did you not come from a journey? Why did you not go down to your house? And Uriah said to David, the ark and Israel and Judah are dwelling in tents and my Lord Joab and the servants of my Lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go down to my house to eat and drink and to lie with my wife? As you live and as your soul lives, I will not do this thing. He valued the call over his comfort and he was not willing to compromise. In the morning, it happened that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter, and he wrote in the letter saying, set Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and retreat from him that he may be struck down and die. Guys, listen. Let me finish this. And I'll, man, the devil is subtle. He just took a little break from the battle. But I want to tell you, in the appointed time of day of God's favor, it is so important to be where God has planted you. Because if you're not planted by the river, you cannot prosper. And listen, if your leaves are for the healing of the nations, then that means that their healing is dependent on you being planted in the right place because a tree planted by the river, its leaf will not wither. And so what happens when trees of righteousness whose leaves are for healing of the nations are uprooted from the place they're planting and that which is supposed to bring healing to the nations begin to wither on the branch? And what we've seen too often in the church is when we choose our comfort over his call, we allow ourselves to be uprooted and to be picked up by preference or, or, or maybe somebody did something I didn't like or, 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 may, or maybe they preach too long or they sing too loud or they do this or they do that. I'm not saying anything about here. I'm just throwing some stuff out there. Hallelujah. Keep your heart clean. But I mean, it happens. It happens. And here's the thing is, You can see it so, we can see it so clearly in someone else's life, but it can sneak up on us 
And that's why relationship matters. That's why having people in your life that say, hey, no, 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 no. Get your butt in the battle. Get out of the bed. Wake up. Come on, king. We need a leader out the field. And I want to tell you, those fields are our battle. Those schools are our, are our battlefield. I've got several meetings tomorrow, strategic meetings having to do with the city and stuff like that, that to me, it is, it is a battle that I belong in. Some of them are early. Some of you will still be in the bed when I'm in the battle. But there are lives that are gonna be hanging in the balance. The decisions that are being made now will affect generations to come. And if someone doesn't run at the, at the fight, the fight will run at us. You were born for this time. You were born for the battle. You were, listen, you were anointed as a priest and a king. That's who he called you. That's who he made you. And see, a little compromise can take you so quick. David just wasn't, he wasn't in the battle. That's nothing wrong with that. I'm just gonna be in the bed. Not really too comfortable in the bed because guess what? Comfort will never be satisfied until it comes into compromise. Then all of a sudden he gets out of bed, walks on the roof. Well, what do we have here? Bathsheba. And before you know it, not only does he lay with another man's wife, but now he's having to move from adultery to murder to cover up the compromise. And if he had just kept his butt in the battle, he would have taken a city called abundance. But apathy robbed him of abundance and created a carnal appetite in him. In the time of spring, when kings go out to battle, keep your butt out of the bed. In the morning, it happened that David, set your eye on the forefront of the hottest battle and retreat from him so that he may be struck down and die. So it was while Joab besieged the city that he assigned Uriah to a place where he knew there were valiant men. In other words, where he knew the greatest, the greatest warriors, the greatest enemies were. It was actually the place that David would have been fighting. He put Uriah to fight in David's place. Because it was a place where David could have led the men in victory. But when Uriah was sent out to fight, it says that the men retreated from Uriah. They put the fire in the field and then they retreated from the anointing. Then the men of the city came out and fought with Joab and some of the people, the servants of David fell and Uriah, the Hittite, died also. And see, the thing about omission is when we begin to lose the heart disciplines of the secret place, our prayer, worship, sharing the gospel, giving, fasting, putting things away. When I say fasting, I'm not just talking about food. Listen, and in, in the world we live in, fasting is not just to close your mouth. Sometimes it's to close your eyes. Sometimes it's to close your ears. Sometimes it's just to turn things off and unplug. When something all of a sudden begins to, to not, it, it's, it's not something that you can use, but it's using you, that's a problem. When it's meeting a need in you, when, when, it's, when it's becoming a quick fix, when, you know, I mean, we pick up phones that don't even ring. Instead of having a conversation, we just have to pick it up and do a random scroll and nothing new has happened on their newsfeed. Listen, watching their Insta story is not gonna change your life. Reading their Facebook is not gonna help your faith sharing your faith with somebody out there will. Taking your call serious, not choosing comfort, but looking into the eyes of someone else and saying, listen, what I have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus Christ, be saved from this generation. In the name of Jesus Christ, be awakened to who you are. That we would not live our lives looking down, but we would live our lives living and loving in the battle, not in the bed, in the call, not in the compromise. We're called to a great commission. We're called to accomplish all that Jesus paid a price for. And the word commission simply means to do, to do. It's an instruction, it's a command, it's a duty given to a person or a group of people. And I wanna tell you, there is a righteous commission and there is an unrighteous commission. There is a, 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 there is a righteous omission and an unrighteous omission. When we begin to omit the things that God has called us to do, we will find ourselves doing the things that the devil tempts us to do. 
But when we begin to back away and begin to recognize that there are certain things in our life that we need to put away if we're really gonna give our whole heart to him, then all of a sudden we can omit the wrong and be committed to the righteous. Am I talking to anybody right now? So I believe that the call of the Lord tonight is in whatever way your heart, in whatever way the bucket of your belief system has got holes and you begin to leak, not that you're leaking a good thing onto other people, but you begin to recognize that your spiritual momentum is beginning to lose ground, that, that maybe you're going through emotions or maybe you're not doing the things that you did at the beginning because maybe you don't have the same initial feeling you once did. I wanna tell you right now, there is a call to say, God, listen, I repent right now. I repent for seeking my comfort over your call. I don't want me and mine. I don't want to self-centered gospel. I want a Christ-centered gospel. I want to lay down my life for this thing. I want to see you get the reward of your sufferings. There is a call, there is a time. And there's, I believe that right now, this is like a dedication service to say, I want to give my life for the gospel. I want to give my life for the harvest. I want to give my life for Birmingham. I want to give my life for this time and this season. If that's in your heart, I want you to come to the front right now. And I believe that God's going to meet you. And I believe he's going to anoint you. And I believe for those who are willing to put their lives on the altar, he's going to put his fire on you. Some, some don't want that. Some just say, no, I just, I just, I just want, I just want the blessing. Listen, the blessing means empowered to prosper empowered to prosper. It's empowered to reproduce. And it's not reproducing us. It's reproducing him. It's reproducing sons and daughters. It's reproducing heaven in the earth. And I'm telling you, whatever it is, they listen, it's not the big foxes that spoil the vines. It's the little foxes. It's the little thoughts. It's the little areas of distraction. And listen, only you know what that is. But I'm telling you, just like when you go to the chiropractor, just one snap, one crack, one pop can make all the difference. And all of a sudden it's like, ooh, man, I can breathe again. I can move again. I got power again. The Lord is right now beginning to bring some things online in your life that have been offline. They've been shut down by disappointment and the deferment of hope. They've been shut down by offense. They've been shut down by preference. They've been shut down by choosing a way that seemed right to a man, but the end was the destruction. awaken us to a purpose that is greater than us. Let us have a glimpse of eternity tonight, Lord. Let us see like you see. You don't see like a ruler. Lord, you see the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning, God. Let us see the, the privilege of being planted in this season, at this time, and in this place. Lord, let us begin to see those who are weeping in the valley of decision, those who are, who are asking and wanting for someone, somewhere, to bring understanding of who they're called to be. Fire of God. Fire of God. Fire of God. Fire of God. Whoa. It's like I, I just saw two prayers simultaneously in my heart. I saw the prayer of Luke 10 about praying the Lord of the harvest to send laborers 
end of the harvest because the harvest was plentiful, the labors are few. But then I saw, it was like, I saw the prayer of the Godhead saying, who shall we send? Who will go for us? And so I saw, the, I saw the prayers of people praying for laborers, but then I saw the prayers of the Godhead saying, who should we send? Where are the loyal ones? Where are the burning ones? Where are those we can put our strength on? Where are those we can put coals of fire on their lips? Touch them with our fire. They would choose the fire over the fear and not the fear of the fire. David sacrificed the fire out of fear. We're gonna sacrifice the fear out of fire. We sacrifice the fear out of fire right now. Burning us, God. Burn, 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 burn. For the water, my soul longs for you. As the body does without water, my soul dies without you.
going to ask Tim Beck to come and pray over us. I believe Tim just has a prayer of commissioning for harvest. You see, once you put your heart on the altar, it's time to go looking for other hearts. I think sometimes, listen, there has to be a God, I'm giving you all of me. But listen, once you do it, go look for other hearts to give to Him as well. I think sometimes we can just be like, we, we're always praying about us. And, I, and I, listen, I, I believe in deeper levels of surrender, but I also recognize that, listen, once you're fully surrendered, let Him live through you. Let us go be the difference. Let us see everything He has promised come to be. Family, these are the, this, this is the hour of greatest harvest. Pastor Jeff sang it so well earlier. Listen, this is the time of divine destiny for Birmingham right now. There is a shift right now. Things are beginning to shift in Birmingham's favor right now. It's an appointed time. It's a day of favor right now. And God is looking for those who would lead. He's looking for those who would choose the battle over the bed. They would choose calling over comfort. They would choose commission over omission. Jesus. In, in pre-service prayer, this is what I heard the Lord say, awakened hearts, awaken hearts. Awakened hearts, awaken hearts. So Father God, we are those who are wide awake. And when we're wide awake, we're wide open. And we see what you see and we feel what you feel, God, and our hearts are moved, God, because your heart is moved. Your eyes are upon Birmingham. That's the reason why for the last year there's been so much fuss. There's been so many issues and so many setbacks, God. But what they say is a setback, we see it as a setup, God. And we will be known as a city of love, God, not hate. We will be known as a city of glory, God, and not reproach. We declare right now, God, that, Lord, our gates are beautiful, Lord. We declare right now, God, that this city will burn and will burn for the glory of God. Yes, we were known for industry. We were, we were known for the industrial revolution. We were known for the civil rights movement, but we're about to be known for a revival and awakening and fire and glory because awakened ones awaken others, God. We are the awakened ones. We are awakened people, and we will awaken this nation, this neighborhood, and this city, God. We thank you, Lord, that our eyes are awake, God. We will not choose the bed. We will always choose the battle. We will run to the battle. We will Battlefield. We will bear the marks of Jesus in our body because we know that you are worthy and they're worthy, God. And so we go forth now, God, as your instruments of harvest. We will be the sickle of the Lord and we will harvest in this city and in this state and in this nation. And the whole world will know that there are laborers in Birmingham. There are laborers in Birmingham and we will not be weary in well doing because now we enter into a place of reaping. Now we enter into a place, God, uh, oh Lord, where we not only reap, God, but we rejoice, God, because the house is full. No longer empty chairs, uh, no longer empty altars, uh, no longer empty lives. Uh, we say no more, but we release the fullness uh, as we commission the labors in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody, give God a shout of praise. Awakened hearts. Awaken hearts. As Tim was praying, I, I saw in my heart what's happening in the natural downtown with the highways coming down. And it was like the Lord was saying, and I'm bringing down the, whole, the old highway because it can't carry the new thing. And I'm erecting highways of holiness where there's been highways of corruption. I'm actually, uh, he's, he's erecting this. It's, it's almost like a, like a highway of divine appointment. What I saw was, I saw, it was kind of, you all I remember like the silver surfer? He would like, and then like, like these like silver highways, right? And he would surf across them. Hallelujah, I saw Captain Marvel. So I guess I'm in that frame of mind. Which by the way, incredible movie. Um, but what I saw, they weren't silver. I saw golden highways being erected in Birmingham. I saw it was highways of holiness that would become passageways and gateways for the glory of God. And it was not just about what was coming in Birmingham, it was for those who were coming through Birmingham. 
And it was like, I saw Birmingham becoming like one of the number one destinations in the world. And it wasn't for vacation. It was for, it was for, it was for like, it was, it was for encounter. It wasn't the place that you go to unwind. It's the place that you go to begin to be set in order, to begin to be set right. It was a place where people say, hey, listen, if you want your life to count, go to Birmingham. If you want your life to matter, if you want to be equipped, if you want to be enlisted, if you want your life to make an eternal impact, you need to go to Birmingham because God is doing something in Birmingham and it's viral, it's contagious. And all you got to do is be present, open and willing and have a desire for his fire and he'll make you burn in a way that you've never burned before. Steve Lemmy, could you come and bless the generations? I feel like you have an intergener- intergenerational, there's like a threefold generational cord. You know, it's interesting, 459, Isaiah 59. I believe that there's, see, oftentimes we overlook Isaiah 59 in pursuit of Isaiah 60, but it's the covenant of Isaiah 59 that actually empowers the Isaiah 60 people to arise and shine. And he said, this is my covenant. My spirit will be upon you. My anointing will be upon you and my word will be in your mouth and in the mouth of your descendants, that's your kids and your descendants' descendants, that's your grandchildren from this time forevermore. And what it was, it was three generations. It was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It was Israel coming together as one. And there's, a, I'm telling you, this, this harvest, it's not a youth harvest, it's not an old harvest. It's a family harvest. It's a generational end gathering where it's gonna be the glory of God that goes out and the family of God begins to come in. You know, when Jason was talking about the highways downtown and I was sitting there, you know, we're new to Birmingham and I don't even know all the highways and what they are, but I was sitting there and the three highways that just came into me were 59, 65, and 20. And that's the intersections there. And I was sitting there in my head trying to add them up, and it's 144. Wow. And I was sitting there, 144. That's a biblical, that's the 144,000. And I know it's not just that what's shown in Revelation. I just thought there's something symbolic about the way God even said the 144,000 are like bearing witness or like the, the remnant that is going out to just be a, a voice of God. And I, and I just think that. There can be such a voice of God that can come out of Birmingham. And this is a time and a place where I know when we first moved here and we have three young children and, you know, Suzanne was always digging and looking and she's just an incredibly gifted researcher. And she looked and said that there were three places across the United States of America where the millennials were gathering. And Birmingham was one of those three. And I thought... There's a reason why that generation is birthing here and it's hungry and it's searching. And it's, the millennial generation is a, what I call a fatherless, motherless generation. I don't mean they don't have fathers and mothers. I mean, it's not covering them. It's not, it's not in their house. It's not over them. And they've seen religion and they're tired of religion. They're looking for the demonstration of the father, the demonstration of the power of the blood. So heavenly father, we just lift up Birmingham this night. We lift up this season where the old highways are coming down, where the new the new bridges the bridges, it's a bridge Father, it's the bridge from the generations that are ahead to bridge over to the generations that are behind. We are the bridge. This is the bridging generation that will not only look forward and bring in the glory of God, but will reach back and say, we have violated the heart and the, just the passion of the Lord Jesus Christ, the heart of the Father into this generation. We have violated it. We have betrayed it. We have not been true fathers and mothers. We have not been an example of Christ-like servanthood. We have not been an example of the love of Jesus Christ. And so, Father, we speak and declare that the love of Jesus Christ will birth, will multiply, and will create a fire, a fire in burning ham, burning ham, that you will burn with your love, you will burn with your fire, and that we will unite, not just race, not just ethnicity, but we will unite the generations. It is this generation. It doesn't mean this generation, the youth, 
this generation the middle or this generation the elderly. It is this generation for such a time as this. This is the era of the Esther anointing. This is the era the Haman spirit is going to be removed from the earth. The corruption, the bloodshed, everything that is defiled, Father, you are invading the earth to just bestow your glory and your love into everyone that is here. So may we unite. May we love like Christ. May we be a bridge of all the generations for such a time as this. And we cover it all in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. And Father, I just bless the families represented here. God, I know you've given us a call to unite the larger family. In fact, if you're here, I want you to hold the hand of any member of your family that's here. Let's just, let's just take, can we just take just a few minutes just begin to intercede for families? Because here's the thing is, we don't want to go after something. And listen, if you don't have a family member here, just link up with somebody else because we're all blood. Hallelujah. Here's the thing. Shiggy Baba. Yes, it's the family of God, but it's called to be real and genuine. It's called to be, it, it, God's wanting to do something in your living room that'll impact the living rooms of the world. That there be a revival from our living room to every other living room. That it would not just be something we experience here, but it'd be revival in the bedroom, revival at the kitchen table, revival in the living room, revival on the way to soccer practice. Because that's a promise that's connected to the purpose that God has on this body from its inception. When Steve said 144, I said, that's 12 times 12. It's 12, 12. That was the original promise we were given with the escrow accounts and the land of promise, 12, 12. And God is beginning to resurrect highways for that move of God. It's a new governmental understanding. 12 speaks of government and it's not a government built on, on the backs of men. Family is the foundation of kingdom and the kingdom is the government. It's the key of David. It's his, it's, it's, see, when it, Suzanne's got a wonderful understanding and revelation of this about what it looks like to live with the government on our shoulders. The government is not something we appeal to, it's something we walk with, we carry. It's the dominion, it's the authority, it's connected to the keys we've been given to open doors, no man can shut, and shut doors, no man can open for our city. And so Father, right now, we, we speak to family doors right now to begin to open to peace and love and joy, to the glory of God, to faith, to the abiding glory of God, that there be such a thick presence of God in every home and in every house, in every home and in every house right now, Lord, that, Lord, that the presence of God would be waiting for us even when we get home. Lord, it'd be, it'd be in the van. When, you, when people go get in the van, it, they would just get in and be like, oh my gosh, God is in my van. Oh my gosh, God is in my house. Oh my gosh, God is in my bathroom. Oh my gosh, God is at my table. To where it be a nearness of God, an awareness of the near, whoa, an awareness of the nearness. Holy Spirit, come and fill every home. Lord, we invite you to cause this house to overflow, but God, we want it to be the overflow of the homes represented. Lord, right now, those, those families who are watching online right now, we just ask you, Holy Spirit, to let your glory crash their homes right now. Let heaven come in every home. Let the kingdom come in every home. Let your will be done in every home. Lord, you said in Isaiah 54, 13, that our children would be taught by the Lord and great would be their peace. We speak right now to our children right now to be taught by the Lord and that their peace would be great. We speak right now for Christ-centered marriages right now. We speak right now for finances that flourish, marriages that matter. We speak right now, Lord, that, that, that husbands and wives would begin to parent with purpose in Jesus' name. Lord, the parenting would not just be about uh, where, where things are at right now, but Lord, I ask that you'd give every single mother and father a vision of who you've created their son and daughter to be. And they would begin to parent them with the end in mind of who you created them to be and how you called them to function. Lord, that the prophetic words would be, be dug up and it would not just be about just the daily doing of homework or the eating of vegetables, but it'd be about positioning them in a place to where their call can prosper. 
God, I speak to every, every family right now to be planted firmly in that place called purpose. Lord, that our leaves would bring healing to nations and everything we do in your name would prosper for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Speaking of family, if you have kids and King's kids, be sure to grab them. You don't want to miss this Sunday. We've got a very special announcement coming for you this Sunday about some transitions and shifts that are going to be happening here to shift us into an upper room encounter and to get ready for what God is doing and about to do. Amen, right? Amen. Thank you so much for taking your time to join with us for one of our most recent services here at Kingsway Church. Again, we pray that you enjoyed your time viewing this video and we invite you, if you're watching this on YouTube, click the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on newly uploaded content. If you're watching this on one of our social media platforms, we encourage you to like and share this video with your friends. And if you're watching on our website, kingswayal.com, we ask that you send us an email at info at kingswayal.com. Let us know where you're watching from and how this service impacted you. We bless you.